Fishy, Fishy wants to know. Fishy, thank you for being a patron. Fishy's over in the Discord server, and you can join Fishy by becoming a patron. Uh, there's a link in the video description to my Patreon. Fishy says, I'm still finishing up work, so I'm going to drop my questions in. What's the relationship between paid gains and filtering? I've heard less filtering means you can push gains higher, but I've not been able to find further explanation for the relationship. Fishy, the uh, the, the filters and the degain are opposed to each other. The P and the I gain are largely independent of the filtering. Okay, so just set them aside. But the D gain is opposed to the filtering. And what I mean by that is having lower filters, more filtering, filter sliders to the left, that provides more filtering of noise and more delay. Having higher D gains amplifies noise. And so what you want to get the best flying quad is the least filtering you can get with the highest D gains. Uh, well, the D gains need to be high enough. You don't literally want to just turn them as high as they can go. But generally, a quad with higher D gains and less filtering will fly better. However, by going to higher D gains and less filtering, you also get more problems with noise. You're letting more noise through. So problems with noise can result in hot motors or even smoked motors, a trilling oscillation, rough sounding motors, and sometimes, you know, unwanted movements when flying, little tick, tick, tick movements. Um, so your goal when, when tuning is to minimize the amount of filtering you, you can get away with and maximize the D gain uh, and the limit on that will be the mechanical and electrical characteristics of the quadcopter, of the build. So a quadcopter that has a well-designed frame with very little resonant problems and clean, just stiff, no resonance, a frame like the AOS-5 from Chris Rosser. That frame is going to allow you to lower your filters and raise your D-gains more without getting hot motors because the frame itself has better noise characteristics. Motors with new smooth bearings are going to let you uh, lower your filters and raise your D gains more. What's going to happen if you have a quadcopter that is mechanically bad is you're going to lower your filters, you're going to raise your D gains, you're going to get hot motors and problems, and you're going to have to back off again. So the the there's a relationship there, which is that if you lower your filters. If you crank your filters so you have a lot of filtering, then you can also raise your D gains super high without causing problems because the D gains will be amplifying the noise and the filters will be filtering it out, but you'll have a ton of latency and the quad won't fly well. So there's a balance between the amount of D gain, the amount of filtering, and the amount of mechanical noise in the quad, and then how good you can get the quad, how much you can get away with and how good you can get the quad to fly. I wonder if I have just made things more complicated instead of answering your question, but if you want to know more about this topic, Chris Rosser has a great PID tuning video that sort of that sort of helps explain it. Uh, Betaflight PID tuning, the easy way to a great PID tune. Uh, it's a 35-minute video. It is a 1,000% worth your watching. He goes into like, what is the PID controller? How does it work? And it, it, it's it's 35 minutes. It is the most concise and well explained. You can make a topic like this. And then he goes into suggestions about how to tune. But if somebody wanted to learn more about PID tuning a quadcopter, in my opinion, this is the 1000% the video should, they should start with. And just like watch this and again and again until it sort of clicks for you or raises more questions. And hopefully that will make sense.